Good morning. My name is Sarah Timer and I am the description and discovery strategy librarian at the University of New Hampshire. So today I am going to be talking about our project to use Wikidata as linked data to enhance our collection analysis. The project had two goals. The first was de to determine what Wikidata properties were coded, coded consistently enough to be of use, if any of them were. And the second one was, if there were some with a considerable amount of coding, what would that tell us about our test collection? So the characteristics of the test collection, we just wanted to concentrate on text to begin with. We did not want to look at the multimedia, the audio, video. And we wanted the test collection to be of a decent size. We didn't want a gigantic one that was going to take up too much time. And we didn't want one that was too small. We wanted one that would give us a, a significant amount of results. So we chose the philosophy collection based on call number. And we divided that collection up into four subgroups. Books not in English, books that are, are in English now, but not were, were not originally in English. Those would be the translations, the physical books that are in English, and everything electronic just got put in one category. We 100% realized that we could have divided up electronic into English, not English, and translations, but we thought we could um, do that at a later date. We also decided to concentrate just on the names that were in the author field, that's the 100 field, and in the subject field, that's in the 600 field. We did not include names that are also in the 700 field, so we're not looking at the translators or additional authors or any of the other people who also were in the 700 field. We're not dealing with that in this project. So there are a lot of Wikidata properties that describe people in Wikidata, but we decided just to concentrate on a few. For the sake of this project, we just concentrated on the sex, gender, native language, country of citizenship, ethnic group, and religion or worldview. It could be that in the future, we identify others that would also and then experiment with those, but we did not do that at this point in time. So the basic overview of our process was that after we created the sets, I imported the uh, data into OpenRefine. In OpenRefine, I reconciled the names using Wikidata, and once reconciled, I added columns based on the reconciled values. So I have a slide where we are going to quickly go over what that process looks like. These are 14 names that came out of one of the uh, philosophy collections. But I didn't want to have the whole sheet because I thought that was going to take up too much time. So the first thing we're going to do is just reconcile those names. So you just go down to reconcile, start reconciling. You need to pick Wikidata, tell it to start reconciling, and it'll reconcile those names. And it's going to go pretty quickly because there weren't that many names. So now... You can see that some uh, reconciled automatically and others uh, didn't know exactly who to reconcile it to. So there's going to be some manual work involved in this process. So the first name was a philosopher. The second one is a dentist. So then you just tell it to reconcile on the first name. Um, it's going to be similar all the way down where the first one is a philosopher and the second one are your things that are less certain, but it looks pretty sure that the first name that you've got is truly that the person that you want, because they are all saying that they are philosophers. And you know this is the philosophy collection, so you're, it's probably pretty safe picking the philosopher as the person that you want to reconcile to. So once everybody has been reconciled, 
now you get to create more columns based on those reconciled names. So you're going to go down to edit column, create columns, and now you're going to choose which properties from Wikidata you want to add. Um, and we're going to start with sex and gender, and you can see you get the preview of what that's going to look like. And you can see even from this view that sex or gender was a very uh, commonly coded field. And now we are um, adding other fields that we think could be interesting. We added ethnic group, we added native language. Um, and you can just see from that list of suggested properties on the left, there, there are a lot of uh, properties that I did not um, even try. Um, not that they would tell me that much that I wanna know for this project, but just in general, there's a lot of information about people that you could get from Wikidata if that information is coded. So after I finish adding all the uh, properties that I want to experiment with, I just click on okay, and those um, fields get added. So now you can see that this is what that looks like. You can see that Martin Buber has a lot of languages spoken, so it is possible to have multiple values in the same field. Um, but basically, that's what the process looks like. That's what I wanted you to get out of that slide. So how frequently were names actually um, reconciled? And here, when I use the word reconcile, um, that just means that that they were names that we could identify a quick match for. If there were no matches or there were too many matches and it wasn't really obvious very quickly who the right match was, we did not try and um, spend time on those names because there were just um, too many and we did not have enough time to be spending time on that. So um, it certainly could be that the name is in uh, Wikidata, and we just did not spend the time to find it. But you can see, even just from our uh, quick manual effort and the automated uh, reconciliation, that 97% of the authors for translations um, were reconciled. And even um, in the electronic, it's at 66%. So it's pretty. It's a pretty significant difference, but still it's more than half. Um, as far as the electronic collection goes, I, I want to make sure to say that uh, in our collection policy, we are now preferring electronic. So any of our new titles are going to be electronic. And that has been the case for at least more than five years. So the physical titles tend to be older. Anything that's new is going to be electronic. Of course, there are also um, classic old titles that are electronic too, but definitely anything that's new is going to be electronic. So uh, you can see there as far as author reconciliation, right, we're at a high of 97 and we're at a low of 66 with an average of about 75. As far as the subject names go, uh, that was pretty consistent across the board as well, and they were all at 99%. So an overwhelming number of subject names actually were reconciled, which makes sense if you think that somebody wrote a published monograph about this person, this person then has a record in Wikidata. Yes, um, that makes sense. And it could be that if we were truly trying to get that up to 100%. If we went in manually, um, I, I wonder if we couldn't um, find the Wikidata record for that other, you know, 10th of a percent. So how about the frequency of Wikidata properties for the authors? You can see that sex gender was the most populated field for authors, and it was, uh, very well populated. We have the low of 95% for electronic and the high of 99% for translations into English. The second most populated field was citizenship or nationality. 
which also had a low of 65 for the electronic, but you know, 75, 90, 93 for anything that's physical. Uh, much less frequently populated were those other three uh, categories, the religion, the native language, and the ethnic group with the ethnic group of electronic down at like four and four percent. And for physical English, it's down at five percent. So not a commonly coded um, Wikidata property. But sex, gender, and citizenship nationality, pretty commonly coded. So what does that look like for subjects? Uh, for translations, sex and gender was at a hundred percent. And uh, it's over 90% for electronic and physical English. It's at 83% for not English language. I think that's very strange. And I started to look into why that is, um, but I still need to, to do further analysis in there. I didn't have time to go back to it and truly look more carefully at why non-English non language authors don't have the sex gender coded. Um, they all are pretty high with citizenship and nationality. That's definitely the second most commonly coded property. And with the religion worldview, native language and ethnic group, um, all less than 50% and down to, for 2% with ethnic group in non-English language material. So, um, much less frequently coded and something that I'm not going to, I'm not going to be analyzing that data right now because they're just, it's not frequently populated enough. So with sex and gender, when you look at sex and gender, what, what is that going to tell us about our authors and subjects in the philosophy collection? And uh, it tells you what you think it was going to tell you that between uh, 95, 91 and 95% of the authors are male with only one person in the entire collection coded as something other than male or female. And even as subjects, it's a very high number of men as subjects. So most of the uh, philosophy texts, either physical or electronic are written by men and or written about men. So that's not uh, that's not real news, but now we have uh, numbers to actually demonstrate that fact. So how about their nationality citizenship? Well, we have not finished analyzing that part of the data in part because nationalities are a little bit more complicated than the sex gender because country names have changed, the borders have changed, and people can have multiple citizenships. It seems like, especially during World War II, there were people who had German citizenship and American citizenship. So it's people are gonna be going in multiple categories. So we needed to think about how we wanted to um, indicate that. So what we started to do was to assign these people, the authors and subjects to continents instead of to countries. I think that's gonna um, work out well. I also think that from the numbers that we have right now, it's going to be sort of as you might be able to predict, the same way that most of the authors and subjects were men, most of the authors and subjects are gonna be either from Europe or from the United States. That's gonna be, it, you know, it's gonna be close to like 90% are, are US or Europe with Asia, Africa, all the other continents are, are a long way behind. And it's gonna be dramatic when we see it, but I just don't have the numbers yet to, to show it to you. So what are our issues and next steps? We have those names that were unreconciled. Would anything change if we were able to reconcile them? How many of them truly have a record in Wikidata? And the people that don't have a record in Wikidata, um, is there a common trait with them or should we be adding those names in? Because um, it could be that the reason that they're not in Wikidata is that they're a member of an underrepresented group. 
Um, and so maybe that's an indication that uh, that's something that we need to do. The our next steps, however, are going to be to finish analyzing that geographic data, um, and that shouldn't take uh, that long now that we've we're going to take the continent approach. Um, we are also going to create a primo view to use um, to create facets to be able to see whether that view is going to help with collection analysis for our collection strategy librarian and our subject librarians to see whether they are going to find that to be a useful tool for them. And this is um, what that's going to look like. There we go. Um, this is a Primo view. We're an Alma Primo library. And you can see on the right side of your screen under the filter results, there is the creator's country of citizenships right there. There's the sex or gender of the creator. You can see there, there's the one transgender female that got coded. You can see even farther down, there's the author's ethnic group that I threw in. And I think I'm going to take out because it's not a frequently enough coded field. I don't want people to get confused by that. Um, so I actually, I need to delete that. But this is what um, this is what, what that view would look like. And here, if you had the sex, you could divide it into, you know, resource type or location or library, or even you could see whether it was electronic or physical. There are a lot of things that you could do, um, but we're gonna need to, to look further into that to see whether that's um, something that would be of interest to other people. So that is where our project is right now. I'm going to stop the share. Here's my contact information if you would like to get in contact with me. So um, the project is continuing, and we might be looking at some additional properties to see whether there are properties that would um, do us more good than the properties we chose. But um, if you have any questions, just let me know. And thanks.